Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio. And in this particular tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and cover 2D platforming movement. And we're gonna specifically cover movement in the X axis. This is going to be the beginning of a small series of 2D platformer tutorials. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. So here I am in Unity and I wanna go ahead and have this character move left and right based off of input. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna look at my project settings and then if you go to Input Manager, you can see that there is both horizontal, vertical, and a bunch of other predefined setups for movement. But we're gonna go ahead and utilize the horizontal. So let's go ahead and copy that name. Then with my player, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new FSM. So I'm gonna add FSM, and we'll just call this X Move. So this is going to be movement on the X axis. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set up a Get Axis. And that's going to pull input based off of both of our A and D keys and our left and right arrows. And we're gonna go ahead and paste in that name that we got from our input settings off of our project settings. So horizontal, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the multiplier so it moves just a little bit faster and you can play with that as you go. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just store this as a global variable. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new global variable and I'll call this X move. And I'm setting this up as a global variable versus just a regular variable so that we can then use it with other FSMs. There's two different ways we can use that data from our get access. So I'm gonna go ahead and translate position 2D and then I'm gonna use that X move for that. So we're gonna to go to global and X move. And then we want to make sure that we have every frame checked on the get axis as well as the translate position 2D. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. And we can see that we can move our player back and forth. Now, the other option is to also, instead of using translate, we can use set velocity. So set velocity 2D because we are in a 2D game and I'm gonna move that underneath the get axis because we wanna get the axis first and then we're gonna utilize it. I'm gonna uncheck vector and I'm gonna check the global X move on our X axis. And then we also wanna make sure this is every frame. So you can hear, see that this also works. So both of those apply. Now the thing that I don't have here is that if I'm moving to the left, I want my character to be able to flip left. If it's moving right, I want it to flip to the right. Now the way we're gonna do that is by using scale. So we're gonna take our scale, and if we do a minus X or minus one on the X, you can see that my character flips. If it's a positive one, it's flipped back to the right. So we're gonna go ahead and add a new FSM that's going to manage that. Let's go ahead and take this first FSM and give it a name. So we're gonna call this as X move. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and add a new FSM. So we're gonna, where it says X move here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a new FSM. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name too, and we're gonna call flip character. Okay, cool. Now that we've done that, we're gonna take this first state and we're gonna call it right. So this is where the character is facing to the right. Then we're also gonna add a new state and we're gonna call this left. All right, so what is it that we wanna do when our character is facing right? So we want to get the velocity from our X move. So that's why we made that as a global variable. If that number is greater than zero, then we want our character to be facing to the right. If it's in a negative, we want to face to the left. We're gonna do a float compare. So float compare, because the X move is a float variable. So we're gonna choose our X move. That's what we're gonna compare against. And if it is less than zero, so we're gonna choose less than, we're gonna do a new event, flip left. We're gonna go ahead and add that transition, take it over to our left state. And then we wanna do the same thing, just the opposite, equal to zero or greater, then we're gonna do a flip, oops, flip right. So we're gonna create a new event, called flip right. Now let's go ahead and add that. And I do not want flip left. And if it's, so if it's equal or greater than, we're gonna do a flip right. Okay, we're gonna choose every frame on both of those. And then we're gonna go back to our flip right. Now, we haven't set our scale yet. When I'm flipped right, I wanna have a scale of one. If I'm on the left, I wanna have a scale of negative one. So let's go ahead and set scale. So we're gonna do a set scale, so in the transform. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And of the owner, which is the player, and I wanna 
uh, change the value of x here in as positive 1. And we don't need to choose every frame because it flips it once and it's done. Let's go ahead and copy that set scale, paste it over into our left. And here we're going to set the scale as a negative 1. So let's go ahead and give this a test. If I'm moving right, I should be facing right. If I move left, then I should be facing left. So here we go, I'm moving right and I'm facing right. If I move left, then I'm facing left. There you go. There's a simple movement for your character on the X axis, as well as flipping your character. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time.